Hello and welcome to the Knock On KCLR Sports Weekly Rugby Podcast involving Tullo, Carlo and Kilkenny Rugby Clubs. Paddy Brown joins us on the podcast first today. Paddy, how's it going? Hi Stephen, all good here this end. All well with yourself. You're I'm, I'm away from the snow, but you're 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 not snowed in around in there, are you? <laughs> uh, you're working. All, you're sweating, sitting still where you are, Paddy. We're uh, wrapped up with our hats and scarves. I'm, I, and I'm, 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 I'm cruising around the Mediterranean, so I can't, uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't share your pain. I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, have to open the shirt a bit more. Sweating that much. Um, yeah, that's being. It's cold, all right, Paddy. We're getting a bit of an old blast of it, but uh, you're in a better spot, I can tell you, because I think there's a storm due this weekend as well. So. You wouldn't know what yeah. would happen with rugby matches or anything like that, but um, true, yeah. it's been a, it's been a quite fortnight. Um, the the teams have all are away from league action. I know there, there was no games last weekend, um, and that. But uh, you were kept busy though in Tullow. You're not playing the AIL sort of cup competition, uh, separate, you know, to everything else as well. So that keeps us going in the meantime. But you've had a win last weekend, which is good. We had, yeah, and it's, uh, it's it's great to be in the competition. I mentioned it before the weekend. We 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 uh, beat Craig's from from County Galway, and it was great to be you know coming up with opposition that we wouldn't be used to playing with, and they came over and brought a good crowd over, and um, and that was the the quarter final. The way it works is the four top teams in the in the division one in the four provinces qualify for that. So there's 16 teams in it, and it's a knockout basis. So the, the match against Craig's was the, was the first round, which has put us into a quarter final, which was played last weekend. So yeah, that would and there was a, there was a good there's good interest in Tullo. Um, I suppose Tullo has traditionally the cup has brought out the best in it. So I think even it even applied to this too as well as the Towns Cup. So uh, yeah, we did with a great win uh, up in C Point, and there was a, probably a little bit of bite in the in the fact that it was, it was C Point because we would be playing them twice in the league and. Only two weeks ago, we did go up to their park in, in, uh, and, and they beat us narrowly. And it probably, to some degree, it was a match that we, we, we felt we did very well and we got two bonus points uh, because we had a good few injuries and um, we're missing a few important players uh, in that particular match. So um, because of that, I suppose we went up, you know, knowing that uh, there wasn't going to be a whole lot between us. And that's how it turned out. So I'll just... Um, Give you the team there first, anyway. So full back was Dara Cosgrave, and um, the, the three quarters was Ty Walsh, Ryan Jordan, uh, Jack Johnson, uh, well, or Adam Johnson was supposed to have started, and he pulled up just before the match, and to be replaced by his brother Jack. And poor Jack only lasted three minutes. He got a really bad injury, accidental injury to his jaw, which required surgery. Then on Sunday, he had, he, wow. just, he, had, he had to have internal and uh, external. Uh, stitches, uh, so uh, you know, it, and it was completely accidental. So there was no malice intended whatsoever, but it was pure bad luck. And the poor chap only lasted, I think, three minutes before he had to be subbed off. Uh, and so his brother Adam um, was a very important player for us. Is certainly having a bad run with with with, with injuries at the moment. Um, and the other three quarters was Ryan O'Neill. In the halves, we had uh, Peter Burgess and Gareth Fitzgerald. Suntro Scott Callback, Brian Kyo. And Tom Cashin. Uh, the second row, Colum Gurry and Martin Cole. Uh, and in the back row, Jack Mac, Donald, Fieko Byrne, and uh, Steve Smith. And the subs who, who came on, and one of them had to come on, William Bryan had to come on quite early, uh, as we see. With, uh, but the subs were Fieko Byrne, Dan Cullerton, Mark Ashton, William Bryan, and uh, Jack Johnson, of course, who I mentioned already. So uh, yeah, it was a it was a, an interesting game, um, high scoring end. The, the final score was twenty seven twenty four. Um, C Point led all the way. Um, they they got two tries in the first half, and we got two tries. So the the halftime score was seventeen fourteen to them. Um, they scored again, and we scored, but they, they they kind of were leading all the way by those by by about three points. And then in the last five minutes, Derek Husband. Um, came up with two incredible penalties, one from 50 yards and the other from 60 yards, well into his own half, his own 10 metre line, and slotted the two of them over to draw the match, first of all, and then to, to put his three points ahead. So it was an amazing uh, display of kicking uh, by young Dara. He's only he's on his first year with us, and he's only, I think, 19. He's a student in the college. So we're lucky that Johnny Tobin is, is, is our 
he's coaching the college team, so we get a few lads from the college for that reason. And uh, Dara is a real uh, prospect. He um, he he's from Kildara, and he played he played with Kildara before coming down to Tolo. He learned his rugby in Kildara, but uh, we'd love we'd love to hold on to him because as well as being a prolific kicker, he's a he's a very he's a tall chap. He's a very good runner um, in in open play. So um, that was good. We the way the scores went, they they went ahead. Uh, and we matched them, but, but, but we weren't able to catch up with them until the very end. We had tries in the first half from Martin Cole, who seems to be scoring tries for sport this year. Uh, and he's such a stalwart for the club. And our new import from, my, from New Zealand, Ryan Jordan, also scored in the first half. Um, but as I said, the score at half time was 17 14 to, uh, to C point. Um, they, they kept their lead right into the, uh, up, up to near the end. And. Um, <coughs> That we, we we kept in touch. They scored again, and we kept in touch through a, a Gareth Fitzgerald um, try about halfway through the second half. And I should say that all three tries, as well as the two penalties, all three tries were converted by Dara Dara Cosgrave. So really, he was a, a huge uh, factor in in the overall match. So yeah, that was the final score then. We, and, and that ass kick was with about six minutes to go. So it was a bit of uh, edgy times even after that. But. Uh, the final score, as I say, was 27-24, and uh, certainly a great boost. Um, we, and, and the added adv- bonus then is we, the draw was made for the semi-finals, and uh, we, we got a home draw in the semi-final against Ennis Gillen. Um, they beat Cook for another tri- uh, Ulster team in their quarter-final. And the other semi-final then will be Bechtel versus another northern team, Dromore. So yeah, uh, that 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 sem- that semi final now is at home in Tolo on the fourteenth of December, uh, and we have a a few a, a big matches leading up to that. We don't have a match the coming weekend, but we have two tough matches um, between now and the uh, Leinster Junior or the All Ireland Junior Cup semi final. We have uh, Bechtel, who are league leaders, uh, away uh, Sunday week, and then we're away to Ashburn uh, the following week. But I think things are lifting a little bit, as Morris Logue would say that you know we had to draw on a fair few subs in the last few weeks with injury and sickness, and they really have come up to the up to the mark. And as we often say on this podcast, the importance of having a good seconds team and the seconds kind of able to keep the pressure on the first, but more importantly, you know, come up and play when when needed. And that's certainly been the case in Tuller for the last for the last few weeks. Um. So as I said, we, we, we've no match next week and we didn't have any major injuries other than poor old Jack Johnson uh, last week and he will be out for a little while with that. Um, and he was playing great stuff in, in himself as well. Uh, but then we have the two away matches to Bechtel and Ashburn. So that's uh, a, a fairly hectic schedule coming up. Uh, and as I said, those two matches will be followed very quickly then by the, the semi-final against Ennis Skillen of the All-Ireland Cup. So yeah, that was that, 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 that was a... Uh, a welcome win for Tolo last weekend. Uh, our seconds didn't have a match. Um, the women um, were st- again had another big defeat against the Tonians, but they, they they certainly felt that they, there was an improvement. They scored 12 points. Was, the final score was 12-48, which was a big score, but they certainly, it was an improved performance from the women, and I think they are taking a bit of encouragement because they are missing a good few players at the moment, mainly down to injury. And so much so that they their match next weekend against UL Bowes, they have asked UL Bowes to defer it uh, because of the injuries and fair play to UL Bowes, they agreed to it. And that match is now going to be played on a very unusual date and time. It's going to be played on a Tuesday evening uh, on the 17th of December. But that was the only date that was available uh, for, for the re-fixture. But I mean, it's, it's better than... They didn't want to, to, to give a walk over and so they're, they're, they're thrilled that UL Bowes um, did agree to that. So um, the, the our, our second ladies didn't have a match last weekend. The match was postponed, and they are sort of going well in their league. They're, they're second from top in their league, so um, they, they all go there. So that's mainly it uh, on, the, on the adult side, uh, Stephen. Moving on then to the underage, with a, again a fairly full schedule of matches. Uh, the boys. Did better than the girls this weekend. The um, the under thirteen boys had a huge win over Navan, uh, fifty seven twelve. Uh, the under fourteen boys lost to, uh, in, a, to in a high scoring game to Nace. They lost forty two twenty one. The under fifteen boys 
had a big win over Nace, 34-17. And uh, the under-16s had a huge win away to Tullamore, 66-0. The under-18 boys, in a high-scoring tight match, uh, beat a tie, 38-35. And our under-18 is uh, drew 27 each with, with, with Port Leash. So some very good results there for the lads. The girls didn't do quite as well. And Tom might talk about that, but the under-14 girls lost 47-17, the Rhinos, to Port Dara. And the under-16 girls went down 38-10 to Arklow. The under-18 Rhinos, uh, their match was, was postponed. So that's all the underage action. Uh, mm -hmm. we just like to profile one particular team there, if I may, Stephen. Our yeah. under-13s are our profile team of the week, the under-13 boys. Coached ably by Graham Jackman and John Rogers. Uh, under 13 is always a, an exciting year, the first year after minis, and a uh, great enthusiasm to start playing the 15 aside game and playing in positions and getting used to positions after the, the mayhem and the madness of minis rugby and lads running around the, and girls running around the pitch everywhere. So, um, I've talked about this before, but there's 41 players in that panel now, and the biggest challenge the coaches are having is uh, rotating the players to give everybody a game and, and I think they're, they're, they've been doing that reason successfully and yet having a, having a great record on, on the field. So they have played nine matches and they've nine wins from nine matches. The Leinster League is just underway and so far they have won three out of three. The South East League is complete. They played six and won six in the South East and because of that they will have a home semi-final in the new year against either Wexford or Enniscorti. So I just wanted to shout out to that Huge group of young boys uh, under 13s, and their 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 coaches Graham Jackman and John Rogers, who are doing doing a fantastic job. And we're told that these lads play with such abandon, and they're they're loving their rugby at the moment. And I suppose the results uh, definitely help in that regard. So, just wanted to talk about that particular team for a moment, Stephen. That's the Lovely. end of the story from Tulla this week. So, thanks, Stephen. No bothers, and uh, thanks for that, Paddy. Good old update, and of course, the best wishes to that chap recovering from that jaw injury as well. Uh, never nice, and uh, as yeah. you said, the, the, the ship in Tullow is starting to steady at the moment, the way things are going. Uh, things starting to look up after a wobbly enough start. Yeah, certainly, and I don't know what, um, you know, turned in the season there. Certainly the sea point match that we played against them, was was uh, was helped us even though they beat us, but we got our two bonus points. And uh, the parallel match and the Thai matches, of course, the local derbies are always a big help in this regard. And I think you know that that match against that that certainly that match against Tegs and winning that first round of that All Ireland Cup certainly galvanised things a bit. So yes, we had a very shaky start, uh, and things have improved a little bit, and it's good to see it. Absolutely, good stuff, Paddy. Um, uh, uh, thanks for that update and of course enjoy the rest of your break there in the lovely sunny off the coast of Greece slash on your yeah, way Tom, to Turkey wasn't to, Tom wasn't there when I was introducing myself so Tom just to let you know uh, I'm well away from the snow and hail and frost of Carlder and, and, and not missing it on bit. It makes me feel better, you know. And I'm, <laughs> and just I'm to cheer you up, Tom. <laughs> and I'm here in the house and I'm wearing an overcoat. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I had to put on my shirt. I had to put on my shirt for this podcast because I I, I was shirtless up to now. It's only twenty five degrees here in Rhodes, and as <laughs> I said, it's not, not road in Offaly. I mean, it's Rhodes in Greece. Anyone, anyone listening to the podcast is also available on YouTube as well. If you want to see Paddy, <laughs> <laughs> he's looking too healthy for at this time. Good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy, brilliant. Thanks a million. And uh, of course, enjoy the break and uh, mind yourself over there. We'll catch up with you next week. Very good. No worries. Uh, well, to move on to Carlo there now, Tom Crotty joins us. Uh, Tom, uh, quite weekend. Obviously, there wasn't much going on last weekend, but we have a couple of games on the horizon to preview. Uh, well, we had a few games. So we had. Uh, so Last, for the first for the seniors that we mean yeah for seniors we had our we had a senior development team went out and played Clondalk and last went up to Clondalk and last Thursday night it was for lads on the seconds who haven't lads just haven't been getting um, a massive amount of game time as I said like we've there's a hell of a lot of lads training up to forty training and 
we're trying to get lads games and getting them regular game time was, was kind of an issue so we're trying to we're, we're trying to get friendlies to um to kind of put a development side together just for to give to give lads who are you know training week in week out but are, are struggling to make struggling to make um the seconds or forces and, and haven't had haven't had a lot of game time so the in fairness we put out um a request for friendly and um Clondalk and seconds agreed to friendly last um thursday night so in all accounts it was um it was a tough game a great game the, the lads really enjoyed it um a couple of players they um they won they won that game Final score up there, I think it was 20, 28-12. Uh, really good performance from Fiona Burke at 10 and um, Peter Hennessy. Uh, defensively, then we had uh, great play from James uh, James Farrell, Jack Hickey, uh, Paul Fitzpatrick. And uh, then an attack of tries, tries came from Ben Deek and Fiona Burke, Billy Fitzpatrick, and Jack Hickey. Uh, then we had a couple of lads who had. Joined haven't haven't but one hasn't uh a guy called Liam Templeton hasn't played rugby in a long time. He's a lovely South African guy, just come up to the club. Um hadn't played since he played back in college, so he just wanted to come up and get back involved in a little bit of rugby. So Liam had a great game and uh, another young player who hadn't played before was Nate Moroni and uh Nate had a good game considering like he's never he's never played rugby before. Um but has trained since literally since the since the first day this the first day back to, uh up in the club so it was great to get a game for them hugely important because there's nothing worse than lads turning up to train and you know putting the effort in and not getting enough game time so uh and hats off to clondalkin for giving us that friendly because it's very hard to very hard to find friendlies a lot of teams are struggling to field seconds and thirds and you know and, and trying to get a game is, is so hard it's not like years ago where clubs had you know two three four teams going um a lot of tr- clubs are even struggling to some clubs are struggling for seconds so uh it was great to great to get that game against clondalk and um then we had the women last sunday they played it was a top of the table clash with the midland warriors and uh, the girls put in a lot of effort last week at training and um, they were just fine-tuning a few things as i said like during the in it's their first year back in you know, nearly 20 years since we had a team on our own um so it and there's a lot of girls who haven't played rugby before but have, have really have really swung into it and, and and picked it up but the girls had a, a fantastic win um 32 nil which puts them at top of the table mm-hmm. uh puts them up at top of the table uh, we have two tries scored by um louise kelly louise kelly She's uh, she's actually the manager of the team. Louise actually played with the with the Coyotes and uh, like <laughs> put in a phenomenal performance and got two got two tries and you know she's uh, she's been a stalwart there organising with uh, a couple of the other girls getting them all together. I think they have a panel now of about 24, 24 women um, from scratch. So we're That's we're with that. We had uh, during. Dern um, Slater scored a hat trick. Um, she's a daughter of Pat Slater, who played with the club, and sister of Liam, Neil, and Conal, who all played with the club. So I'm saying she's the best Slater yet. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the thing. And uh, Sarah Fury, there's um, sister of Johnny and Mark, who's a near old footballer. Um, she's really taken to it. And uh, Anna's a, a flyer there in, 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 the, in the back line. Um others to mention there were Courtney Forbes played in the centre, had a had a cracking game and uh got I think a couple of com- got a conversion on that on and that. And in the forwards then Valerie Timmons, Val is around a long time. She played Thanks, with uh, she played with the Coyotes and then I think she played in Ace as well. So uh, a lot of experience there and it's brilliant, brilliant to have her. The um their lineup was superb on um I have to say the lineup was superb on on Sunday. They uh, they took a, a good few of the opposition ball, and that was an instigator on that uh, jumping at two. So, and the other girl to mention in the forwards, Sarah Breslin had a had a really really good game as well. So the women are the women are absolutely flying. Um, 
they have no game this week, and then they're out against Lansdowne Sunday week, and um, they're playing just before the men. So uh, we're looking forward to having a, a little a little watch of them too. That uh, next week, sorry, Sunday week. Um, so no game with the senior men this weekend. Uh, next game is uh, Stonians at home. It's a massive game for us. Um, we're kind of blessed because a lot of our games are at home for that. I think we've, I think we've only two away games out of the rest of the season. So, but Stonians is a, a huge game, and it's on the Sunday because of the interna- uh, because of the international against Australia. So, uh, the preparations are on board. We had an easy week last week. Um, Give the guys a bit of a rest because a lot of knocks and bruises and you know as i said we found that we found this league very physical and um trying to keep players right for the you know for the rest of the season is tough because as I said, it's a it's a lot more physical than division one b a lot quicker and, and uh, look we're back back up we're back up really on tuesday night so um Back was head to the grindstone on this one. Like we just have to, we have to work. We're looking forward to the game. Um, we have a lot of work to put in over the next two, over the next two, this Thursday and next week, uh, in preparations for that one. But look, we're looking forward. It was nice to hit that win against Ashbourne. So hopefully we can continue, continue to play well and and uh, be competitive and, and uh, secure a place in in Division One A. Um, I'd say thanks to Paul Ward actually when I'm here, uh, Paul. The lads went down last uh it was a wednesday night last wednesday and had a a bit of a fun session with paul and the hurling club um and they really really enjoyed it so i have to say thanks a million to paul for our uh for dave baron for organizing that with with uh, paul ward it was a really enjoyable night everybody had a bit of crack and look you need things like that to uh keep interest on board especially in an off week you know because it's easy in an off week just to step away and you know, take it easy, but look, yeah. it's a, a bit of a run out for the lads and a bit of a crack. Uh, underage, Tom, just where did you say this to Tony to match his Tom? Is it home or away? That's at home, oh, at home, okay, yeah, yeah, home. The uh, Tony's matches at home, um, so it's it's the last of the first, the, the, that's the last of the first round of it, really, isn't it? And then yeah. we go back, swing back around again, and play everyone again. So, it's yeah. the important match for us to kind of. So to kind of get level and sorted and to see we'll see where we're at now but look we're in a better place as i say just trying to i suppose we kind of got caught in the sense of losing the scrum half from the start of the season and and just things being a little bit all over the place kind of just trying to figure out what 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 the team was and what the team should be going forward um but a lot of lads have stepped up have, have stepped up this year and put their hands up so look as I said, it's a huge. It's a, every game is important. Every game is a cup match now at this stage for us. But uh, as I said, we're looking forward to it. And kind of all the pre- preparations are working fairly well, and as I said, we have a lot of work to put in over the next next three training sessions to see how that goes. Um, back onto the underage. Um, the under 15s had a very good win over Port Arlington, 36-7. Our two under 18 teams were, had uh, two tough outings. Uh, the Ambers lost uh, 38, 38, 31 to uh, good and Scarty side. Uh, that was down in, in Scarty last Saturday evening. And the, the under 18 black team lost 34, 19 to, to Nace at home. Um, they're kind of 18s have been going fairly, fairly well, but. Uh, struggled a little bit uh, struggled a bit this weekend but look they're getting two teams out and that, that's um it's hugely important again having especially having that that uh the development side which is a lot of last year's under 16 stepping up um mm-hmm. that's the black team and you know it's important to have game, that they're getting games and um uh, developing on because a lot of those are going to have two to three years at 18 so uh it's we're happy happy that, happy enough where the where the 18s are at the moment um, I think they just qualified for Premier, um, the Premier section. So look, we'll be, will be a whole new phase starting in on the seventh of December. So look, it'll be a tough league for them. 
but if they're going to learn and develop, they have to, you have to play the best to develop. So we're just, we're happy to be in or happy to be in Premier League. Was the the goal at the start of the season um, was to get to kind of qualify for Premier. So they've done that, and I think they're happy enough happy enough where they are. It'll be tough for them, but as I say, it's very important to um, to play the best if you want to if you want to develop your your rugby. Um, around the fourteenth had. Uh, a high score match was 61 45 to the uh, two hour under 14s with a good win over over port leach and um, the under 16s uh beat wex for 28 14 and our under 13s um they beat uh port arlington 22 nil so you you said i said only for like other than the 18s rest rest of the teams performed well paddy went through the rhinos the 14s and 16s our 18s um uh, our 18s are out, are out. Mm, they're out, yeah, out, Jesus, I should remember this, because I'm quote, <laughs> Friday night at half, our 18 Rhinos out against Gory, Friday night at um, half seven, um, that game is in Carlo this time, and uh, it's a huge important match for them, because it'll be um, to qualify up a division, so uh, we're hoping for anyone that out for a bit of support on Friday night, the girls will love it, um, they've been training very well, and uh, they deserve to get their position up to to move up the division. So, um, we're looking forward to that, and as uh, preparations went well, are going well for them. Uh, matches going forward in the thirteens have a tie at home on Sunday at eleven o'clock. The under fifteens are at home to Kilkenny at ten thirty on Saturday, and as I said earlier, the uh, combination of Tullow Carlo Rhinos are. On in Carlo this time on Friday at, at half seven, and uh, under 14s are away to Port Leach on Sunday at 12. There's, a, there's not a lot of youth games this again, there's a lot of transition between phase one and phase two of the Leinster League. So, uh, some of so the 18s that have, have a well deserved week off. Um, but as has happened, that uh, the under sevens and eights, uh, must say thanks to Kilkenny for hosting. The, the fantastic mini blitz down there last last weekend and i think everybody really really enjoyed it uh so thanks to all the parents and everyone who traveled and brought the kids down to kenny for hosting uh lastly then we have the youth's quiz the youth quiz is on friday night for anyone once interested in table quizzes the youth's uh table quiz is on at half seven on friday night it's 10 euro per person or 40 euro per table and that's in trying to raise funds for our 15s go on their main tour they're the team goes on the main tour every year and they're just raising a, a few quid for that or that that's all that's really happening in carlo for at the moment why you know <laughs> joking not the not kept on your toes tom what are you sure have to be as i said this weekend there's no men so it's be quiet for no ladies ladies are not out no i think everyone's out next weekend so yeah we can chill out this weekend and yeah and the girls on the friday night for me is great because that means i'm off 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 <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no wrong, except on the t except on the tv except on the telly yeah the absolutely and a, and, a, and a couch yeah sure Paddy right. gets to watch it in some exotic part of the world <laughs> You're on mute there, Paddy. Oh, yeah, I said I might be able to find an old Irish bar somewhere and watch the Fiji. I mean, the bar is where you're going to be on Saturday because it, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's hard to get out of bed here in the morning. <laughs> well, Saturday, I think I'm in Mykonos, if that's any good to you, Tom. Huh? <laughs> I think I'm in, I'm in Mykonos on Saturday, if that's any good to you. <laughs> I can only dream of Mykonos at the moment. <laughs> Any Mac. The only me and us I'll have might be the might be the Irishmen on, on Saturday watching the match. <laughs> That'll be my okay, my yeah. ideal of the week making us at the weekend. But uh, yeah. I'll be sitting in work at that time, uh, thinking yeah. thinking about making us. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely part of the world, Paddy. I have to say, Greece is gorgeous. I'm oh, very, beautiful! Very, yeah. very, beautiful. very jealous. Beautiful. And um, are you parked up there now, Paddy? Or are you out in the sea? No, we're 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 parked up here now. We'll be heading out at six o'clock. It's it, we're two hours ahead, so it's uh, it's now oh, half four here now, and it's half two with you. Yeah, so we're heading out at six o'clock. 
o'clock t- here, an hour and a half. Uh, but we, we spent a whole day today in the city of Rhodes, which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, we, were on, we were on holidays there two years ago. It was gorgeous. Absolutely. Fabulous. Yes. I was never here before. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. second time there. It's really nice. I know we're not yeah. talking about rugby, but we'll do a bit of <laughs> Rhodes is a stunning place. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's also half a travel show um, because uh, we talk <laughs> about Portugal, Marseille, <laughs> the Stade de France, <laughs> wherever. Uh, James does be in America and Finland and everywhere, so he does as well. So. Well, he says he's working. I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. And James in an airplane as we speak on the way home from America. Very good. We're a very well travelled podcast in Paris. <laughs> Absolutely. And I see the Irish team was announced. Um, I haven't seen it, Tom. It, uh, it was announced there too when myself and Paddy started. Have you got a hand there? Mr. Prendergast uh, is starting at, at 10. And no harm. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a couple of couple of new caps there as well. Karmic is the Tuku. See in. Yeah. Hold on, now we have it. We have Gus McCarthy is in there and Karmic in... Oh, I'm not even going to pronounce that. Was it again? I think it's a, it's a Tuku or something. Institute, yeah. Uh, Jamie Osborne, a full back. Matt Hansen on the on one wing. Uh, Rob Henshaw and Bundiaki in the centre. Uh, Jacob mm-hmm. Stockdale on the other wing. Prendergast at 10. Casey at 9. Andrew Porter, Jerry McCarthy, Finley Beelham, then James McCarthy and Ty Burn in the second row. Uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Kuku, there I got it. Uh, Jay, uh, Josh Van de Fleer and Caelan Doris. And then the replacements are Kelleher, O'Toole, Clarkson, Henderson, uh, Keane Prendergast. Uh, Connor Murray, Frawley, and McCluskey. Yes, yeah, so the rest and Gibson yeah. Park. On. That's interesting. Yeah, a big, a big, a big day for the Prendergast family and their Carlo connection, as we saw. Uh, they're, they are, they are nephews of the wares of Carlo, so it's a great, a big, huge day for that family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Um, All of all will be watching that. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. The yeah. Kira's <laughs> connection there. Absolutely. Um, Fiji won't be any pushover either, lads. It's not like the old days, you know, when it was a handy match. Well, let's say if, 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 um, if they give young Sam the hardship that they gave the Welsh out half, Jizzy got yep. battered. Absolutely. He did. He got hammered out. Yeah. So, look, it, it, I, I, delighted to see it. It's a, it's a good learning curve for them. So, you know, yeah. play, play Fiji, as I said, they're not pushover anymore. And we, yes, and we talk, we have none of this out half the debate anymore, and now it's started up again. So it has this yeah. Crowley, Prendergast, Frawley thing, Frawley. Keep, exactly. keeping everyone talking. Well, it's funny yeah. to see that, and the two Burns playing for Leinster A. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ross it's on the bench. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. look, I, I, isn't it great for once we've actually started to see a bit of development at 10 because we haven't had it for a long time, and we've been given out, I think. Last two years, the podcasts have been uh, on a regular basis, given out about ten. So it's nice to see a bit of competition there, and I think I think all three will develop. You know, I, I'd like to, still like to see Frawley getting a little bit more game time because I think he deserves it. That's, that's Is he out. injured, Tom? Did you mention no, he's him on the bench? Well, he's on he's the bench. bench. For the weekend. Sorry, yeah. on the bench. Okay. I'm glad he is. He definitely needs to redeem himself after the after the last match, uh, after the New Zealand match, and he dropped a few balls, but and he's better than that. So I'm, I'm glad to Hi. see him getting another chance. Yeah, that's a blip. Yeah, you're allowed those. Just, mm. and it's just unfortunate the match he did, mate. Yeah, that's okay. right. Look, they had a good win, a good win the last day. Um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to this one actually because I'm hoping that the rugby lives up to what Fiji can bring. So you know it's. They're a great side to watch, and hopefully Ireland will match that. And yeah. it's, well, it won't be a boring game. I hope it, it is an open game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, keep keep us all loads of conversation points over the next couple of weeks and months. Anyway, before the Six Nations exactly. kicks off, there's a fierce amount of chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm-hmm. There sure is a bit of hype, all right, and people saying that Andy Farrell has gone stale and he's not changing the teams and he's going to be gone now to the Lions. And 
all these various combinations and things being talked about and uh, people saying that the Irish are too predictable now. But we'll, we'll, we'll see on Saturday. We'll see on Saturday. All will be revealed on Saturday. Well, yeah, it's mm. an awful lot that rubbish. I was watching and they were going on. Rubbish. Absolutely Murray was rubbish. The last bench against New Zealand, Carter Murray was an age and Keane Healy was an age and you know, Peter O'Mahony, like for God's sake, and Camp David Campisi even joined in the the course mm. in the last couple of days, saying Ireland now are too easy read and they're not very up their game plan, and that's why we're on a downward to a downward journey. But man, I don't think things are that serious yet. No, no, I don't know. no. For and sure. you're not going to go out. And to be honest, like you're not going to go out against New Zealand and with a whole heap of new caps or young lads out against New Zealand. He did try it, and. You have to, and I don't care what anyone says, you still have to remember that New Zealand have come off the bat of playing uh, all their internationals against Argentina, Australia and South Africa. So they, they've been well drilled in and like super yeah. rugby straight into that. It'll be like yeah. us playing yeah. Yeah. after the Six yeah. Nations. Like they've been playing together. That's the first time that team has played and they were rusty. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that can happen. And just unfortunate that we played like if you played a lesser match, the first match might you know, yeah. and then played New Zealand later on. But we just happened to have New Zealand forced up, and they were, uh, you know, they were hungry to beat us anyway. So, yeah, uh, after the last time at home, so it's, I don't, you can't really look into it. There was a better performance last week, and hopefully this week again it'll improve. But like the team hasn't played, so you can't expect teams to go out. I mean, you could say the same for England. England haven't won a game yet either. So, yeah, <laughs> do you know they've been beaten. And they're, and they're a decent three of the three, yeah, yeah. You know they're a decent enough side. Yeah, so we won't call a crisis yet, lads. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's it. Um, well, good luck the weekend. Whatever games you have on, boss and youths um, and everything else. Uh, we'll catch up with us next week. We'll have James back on the podcast as well. I see how Kilkenny are getting on. But for the meantime, enjoy the internationals this weekend, lads, and take her handy. Thanks, Stephen. Good luck. Take care. See you, Tom.